Hello and welcome back to the Elise Yeezy Show. I am your host, Elise Yeezy. How good is this lighting? It's just like the sunlight, but I feel like I don't know. I feel like I don't. I feel like I don't look my age. I'm just gonna say I almost caught myself out then. I feel like I don't look my age. I feel like I look. How old do you think? Twenty five. Angelina Scoff, by the way. Well, now we know that you're not twenty five. Hi. Also, I don't think anybody cares that I'm here. I'm always here. Um. Yeah, you are actually 50, though. So this is really, <laughs> like, you're looking great. <laughs> so, Thanks. Thanks. The lighting's lovely. <laughs> Do you know what, though? I'm in trouble. I'm in a little oh, bit of trouble. Right. Because, so at the moment, I'm uh, in my boyfriend's sister's house. And we're in, like, I consider this the countryside, you know? Like, I need to go to London Waterloo le- later. And it's going to be an hour and a half long train. Do you know what I mean? So I consider like we're in the countryside, right? Mm-hmm. Like we have to, <laughs> I sound so ridiculous. I did grow up in the countryside, but I lived in London for a long time. And then when I moved slightly out of London, I was still like commuter distance. So like within 20 minutes, I could be in central. So I'm used to just like walking five minutes and there's a Tesco's, right? But like here, um, if you want to go to the Tesco's and I don't drive, you have to walk like 30 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Which is good because I'm getting my steps in. But it's like <laughs> culture shock, right? Yeah. You should so... learn to drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like a bone of contention between me and everyone. Like, I mean, I I know how to drive. I'm just not allowed to do it legally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But I prefer being driven. Mm, this is where I differ with you. I hate being driven because I have... Do you know this about me that I have serious control issues? <laughs> really? It's really bad. It's why I hate flying. It's like because somebody else is flying the plane. And how do I know you're not a fucking idiot? Like... <laughs> well, it's really thousands bad. of hours of testing and training. But I, I know, I know what you mean. to me. <laughs> I know what you mean, because like if you crash, then that's on you. You were being stupid. Yeah, it's like I fucked up. Oh well. <laughs> and you know what? Not to like freak you out or anything, but there was a um I'm going on a plane in two days. Is this a story I need to hear? Well, like nothing bad <laughs> happened because they stopped the pilot getting on board. <sighs> Go on, tell me. He was drunk and he was he was going to try to fly. But they stopped him, obviously, because they noticed, like, they were like, what are you doing? You're drunk. Go stay at a hotel. So they did stop it. And even if he mm. was drunk, you have the co-pilot. And even if both of them were drunk, you have the autopilot, which I'm told by pilots does most of the heavy lifting anyway, apart from, like, taking off and landing. So... Yeah, the taking off and landing is the important bit. Is it? Yeah, the rest of the time, like, I've been on a plane, I've told you this, where the engine stopped in when we were in taxi if it stops like at that point it just glides like you're fine it's the takeoff and landing where most accidents happen i worry about the thirty thousand feet in the air thing because like i worry about um <laughs> no no it's too stupid but you know what, i'll say it i like i worry what if i'm looking out the window and i see a ufo <laughs> Not the UFO I mean, does anything, but what if I just see it? That would be so cool. I no, think that would be great. Yeah, it would. I was so convinced when I was a kid that I had seen a UFO on a plane, but like presumably it was actually just another plane. <laughs> I just went, yeah, UFO makes the most sense. Does it not worry you though? Because it totally like it, it, it freaks me out. Because I'm very sure that me and my friend when we were younger, we saw a UFO. And that was alarming, but we were about eight years old, so it was kind of like, whatever. But on second thoughts, where I grew up in the countryside, it was Ministry of Defence land. Like, they had this whole land where they'd do, like... I think they were up to weird experiments, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So it could have been... You know, because it wasn't a normal aircraft, what we saw. Um, But the second time, I was a teenager, and I was hanging out with my friend, and it was, like, 3 a.m., and he was like, what's that in the sky? And it was three weird lights moving around in the sky and the moment i saw it i was like oh shit maybe that's like a, you know a bunch of ufos and i got so scared i was like i'm going indoors i'm going indoors i'm going to my kitchen i ain't looking at this see you later and he was like what's wrong with you just like look it's fine on like closer inspection it was just really powerful lights do you know what I mean? Because we could see the beam. <laughs> no, but that's weird though. It was 3 a.m. And that was clearly like Ministry of Defense, because like who else in the area would have really like massively powerful lights? What were they doing? 
They were just like three mm. lights in the sky, like going around in circles. Weird. But it was scary. Are you sure it was Ministry of Defense and it wasn't wasn't it? Why didn't you ask Nick Pope? Tell him that uh, there's around this time, <laughs> this many years ago. What the fuck was that, dude? I'm sure Nick Pope knows exactly every single time uh yeah. the MOD are just messing around with lights. Well, like yeah. cause because they because you could see because they were already like they were massive in the sky do you know what i mean so it's like clearly they were like massive i guess industrial lights and like who else in my area i mean where i grew up we basically just had the mod and a big tesco that everyone would like hang out in the car park (laughs) that's all you need for a good town and economy you didn't even have a pub had to be a pub yes Mm -hmm. yes we had Two pubs, and one of them kicked me out when I was seventeen for underage drinking. Not on oh, the other pub. Seventeen is care. that's old enough, that's right? Fine. And yeah. it was at Christmas too. Oh, that's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole group of us, so we just went to like this working man's club, and they didn't care. They didn't care. But then I remember this quite clearly because I was seventeen. I asked the bartender, "Can I have a pint of beer and a tequila shot, please?" And she was like, "Are you sure? That's weird." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it." And she gave me a pint of beer. And I was like, "That's weird. Where's my shot?" And I'm drinking the beer. She put the shot inside the beer. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Is that and a thing? I... No, it's not a thing at all. Like that's why she thought I was weird, and I drank it all, and then I was sick later that night. So, through my town, my hometown, rubbish. Have I told you that I've never actually drank like a tequila shot? Really? I can't do it. I feel like I've told you the story before, so I'll glaze through it. First time I tried it was on my 18th birthday. Couldn't swallow it, spat it on the table. This was a problem because I had like put so much salt on my hand, like my whole mouth was just full of salt, so everything just tasted bad. Second time I tried it was like a week later, and all my friends were like, no, no, nobody can drink it the first time, it's fine, do it again. Same fucking thing, just without the salt, just spat it on the table again. It was, I just can't, like my body goes, no, no, no. Like I can have it in a cocktail, but not in a shot. I don't know why. I'm just, I can't do it. Yeah, you know, there's a Stephen King book. It's um, it. You know about the Pennywise the Clown and stuff. Yeah. And there's a bit. I literally have him right here. Really? Oh, ooh, this old dude. Mm. <laughs> ooh, lovely. There's a bit in the um, in the beginning of the novel where they they get their memories back. They realize Pennywise has returned, and they're all adults. And one of them, Ben, the architect, he goes to this pub and he asks for like a pint of tequila and they're like what is wrong with you and he's like no just give me like a full glass of tequila and he gets some lemons and he squeezes lemon juice into his eyes and then he downs the pint because like he's in so much pain from the lemon juice being in his eyes that he could just down the pint of tequila easily like no problem and then he walks out pissed why would you do that what is wrong with stephen king Are you okay <laughs> I feel like I used to do something similar with white wine, though, because if you get a pint of white wine, <laughs> this is bad. This is why, like, I'm Tito and I don't drink anymore. But if you get, like, a pint of, like, one of the cheap bottles of, like, Blossom Milk, like, it used to be, like, two ninety nine or something back in my day, but it's probably, like, a tenner now. Get, like, a bottle <laughs> and then add, like, the tiniest bit of lemonade. You can down it really. Don't anyone take this advice, but you can down it really easily. <laughs> you should just do that. <laughs> Like down I mean, a we... pint of wine, white wine, and like once I downed an entire pint of white wine in no an entire bottle of white wine in less than like ten minutes, and then I was sitting down and I stood up and fell over and I had to be put to bed early. Don't drink like that; it's a waste of time. Don't drink. Don't, don't drink in general. Don't do drugs. Don't not brush your teeth. I don't know where I needed a third thing, so I couldn't think of anything else. <clears throat> Don't not wash your ass. Yeah. Good life advice. Be clean. Wash your ass. <laughs> Go wash your ass. Oh, that's all right. I was gonna say. All right, I was gonna say. Right. That's why I'm in trouble. Not like not drinking because you didn't wash your ass <laughs> and not washing my ass. No, no, no. Because I'm in this area, I'm in like the sticks. I don't know if this is considered the sticks. It's like a really nice area, actually. There's just fields everywhere. It's great, right? So I was walking to this, um, like I was walking to the shops earlier. It was a hike. I was having a morning hike to the shops, 
right, to get the bread and the milk and stuff. And I saw on the way there, there was like a beauty salon place, right? So I was Googling it back when I got home. It's a spa and they do all of my favourite things like hydrofacial facials, IPLs, like laser Ooh. treatments to get rid of like your red face and stuff. All of my favourite things. So I'm like, oh, well, it would be rude <laughs> not to go. But should I be spending money on like, will I spend my money on of like crazy beauty treatments like I'm up for just anything right so I'm going to have to finally finish my parodica about mm -hmm. a former prime minister having uh relations with a alien that shapes this into a pig I'm gonna have to do that and sell like a bunch of them just so I can go to this like spa because it's not cheap but they do all my favorite things do you know what I mean you know what I think? It's it's not in London. It's a bit far away. So you're giving them extra business, which they probably could use. So really, you're doing it for them. I'm helping the local economy. Yeah. By exactly. getting lasers shot at my face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, just, yeah, it's good. It's good. Write the book, make the money, give it all to them. It's essentially like community work. So you could say that I am a philanthropist. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you could. No one's going to, but <laughs> you could. <laughs> I will. That's going to go on my Instagram bio. Elise Easy, bad YouTuber, forward slash philanthropist. She's coughing because I've made her laugh so much that she's dying. Yeah, you nearly killed me there. I'm okay. I live, bitch. You can never kill me. <laughs> I won't die. I think we talked about this in the last one, actually, <laughs> about how I won't die. So it's all fine. She just won't stay dead. <laughs> Never. You write I got books a... about me. I'll write a book about you. I got a second problem as well. These okay. problems are just like the most middle class, like like bourgeoisie, stupid fucking out of touch things you've ever heard. No, problem number one, I need to make more money so I can spend a lot of money on beauty treatments. Problem number two, <laughs> I have a spare ticket tonight in London to see David Mitchell from Peep Show talk about history. And why is that a problem? Because I got a spare ticket. And like, sorry, I'm traveling an hour and a half to go into London. Meanwhile, my London friends are like, oh no, I can't. It's too spontaneous. It's too, you know, I told like, uh, I told Kes Motion yesterday. I was like, do you want to come? Like a last minute dropout. My boyfriend can't go. He has to like stay here. Oh no, it's just, it's too spontaneous. You know, I can't deal with spontaneity it's like that. too spontaneous. Are your friends all 70? Like what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is what like, like, Thank you. This is just, it's so annoying. It's like, it's like, and he's younger than me. He's like a few years younger than me. He should still be like getting up and doing things, you know? But like my, <laughs> my other my other friends as well, it's like, oh no, I can't because I have a dog and I have a dog. <laughs> That's basically Rachel Waits. <laughs> no, Rachel was, Rachel was a long shot anyway, because she lives all the way like up in Yorkshire. Do you know what I mean? Like that is mm. a two hour train journey. So it was just like a long shot anyway, but it's, it's, like people are just getting more and more because I want to, you know, I don't go to bars. I don't go to club. I was never big on clubbing anyway. Like I was a go to a bar, pick up some drugs. I have to whisper because like there are family members here. And I'm like, oh, you know, and then go and like be in someone's like kitchen in the afters till 8 a.m. That was more my vibe over clubbing anyway. But I'm not doing that stuff. So I'd rather like, like do things for my brain. Do you know what I mean? Right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. People like, like all my friends, yes, I guess we're a little bit older now, but like they act as though we're in retirement homes. <laughs> like, like, and it's not as if like it's a, it's, it's a show or anything. It's a talk about history by David Mitchell from Peep Show. <laughs> like, come on, someone take my ticket. It's very strange that. You, I don't get it. I'm sorry, I don't get it. I would go with you, but I don't think I can book a flight this late. <laughs> so, so I also want to arrive time. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe next time, man. I don't know. It's just a bit. It's a bit annoying because I'll send like I like I'll I'll message ten or like even up to fifteen different people sometimes. Like like with um 
uh, I went to a Garth Marenghi show a few weeks ago, right? And had a few dropouts then because it was just like, I had three dropouts of the tickets because there were three lots of birthday parties that individuals were going to. Like it was my boyfriend's mum's birthday and it was my friend's cousin's birthday and it was my friend's friend's birthday. So, you know, I had three dropouts, which is funny because November, what's nine months before November? February. What's in February? Valentine's Day. Clearly all these birthdays are because people are getting busy on Valentine's Day. Do you know what I mean? So unoriginal. So unoriginal. <laughs> but it was so hard to like fill fill seats to go to a comedy show. You know, people are just like I don't know. I wish people, people would invite pressing. me to things randomly. <laughs> I right? need to move there so I can just take your tickets. I wish like I wish people would invite me to things. Why am I the one that's always trying to organize stuff? Why is no one like me enough? Huh? I think you're great. They probably love you, but they have dogs and uh, Alzheimer's and bad hips and stuff. So look, dogs I can forgive because I love dogs. That's not a problem at all. Like if you like, even if it's my birthday dinner, you don't want to see me because you'd rather be of your dog. I understand that. That's fine. <laughs> All this other stuff, yeah, Alzheimer's and bad hips. Not an excuse. <laughs> Come out regardless. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think so. That's all my complaining for the little all court up segment. That that's all I wanted to talk about today. Are you all right? Have you got anything to contribute before we get onto the meat of this episode? <laughs> you the put me on the meat. spot now. <laughs> my brain is just gone. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am or what my life is. <laughs> I mean, I'm a bit sick. I think people have guessed that already. Um, beyond that. I'm grand. I'm going to Edinburgh in two days, which you know, I'm about to cough profusely. I'm dying. That's what's happening. Okay. Not going to okay. wood. Okay, good. Edinburgh, yeah, because yeah, like, what's the? It's a neuroscience convention, isn't it? Yeah, innovations in clinical neuroscience. It's a. Uh, it's more of like a seminar than a convention because it's just like a couple of talks and stuff. But I am excited for it. I'm interested, and I hope I'm not the only undergrad there because otherwise, I'm going to feel really weird. But I'm going to try and network. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What is this face you're doing at me? Do you know who would have liked to have been invited to a neuroscience convention? I so would have. Why do you think I was texting you that I'm going to Edinburgh? I'm like, please say you want to come. Please say you want to come. <laughs> I don't you want have to, to be. On my you own. have to be way. You know, you have to be more direct with me than that because you know that I always think that everyone secretly hates me. I didn't think you still did it with me. I think that about my boyfriend, about my best friend. I think that about everyone. I'm like, I was. Oh, yeah, my friend didn't reply within the hour. Yes, he definitely hates me. Though most of my friends do have good reason to hate me because I am really annoying. But still, yeah, but that's no excuse. <laughs> I would have liked to have gone. And I love Edinburgh. Edinburgh's wonderful. Well, come along then. It's not oh, too late. It's too, I can't do spontaneity. It's too <laughs> I'm going to fucking <laughs> kick your ass in a second. No, but the thing is, I was hinting at it, but I didn't want to ask you because I think that you hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Why are we all such neurotic messes? It's just like, I like we're know. our worst enemies, honestly. Do you think it's like growing up online message boards and stuff? They've all killed our confidence. Yeah. No, I think that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've cracked it. <laughs> well, or, like, nah, to be honest as well, it would have been a pain in the ass to go to Edinburgh because I'd have had to have, I would have got a train. I didn't get a plane. I'm too scared of planes. It would have, it would have been a pain in the ass, like considering I'm literally in, I, I don't even know where I am right now. Um, if there's one in London, I'll find one in London and then we can both go to that. Because I like okay. neuroscience and things. Like, I don't really understand a lot of it, but what I do understand, I like to lord over other people. So, I mean, no, it's interesting because the talks there, one of the guys is talking about like some app they developed for, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, he'll tell me in the talk, but like stuff to do with rehabilitation of neurogenitive disorders with this app and it's AI powered and stuff which is cool another woman she's into surfing for brains I don't know it sounds cool what do you mean surfing for brains I just realized how weird that sounded like there's something to do with like 
for your your neuro blah -de blah I haven't been to the talk yet I don't know what it means that's all the information I have just surfing and brains okay not surfing okay. for brains it's like bowling for soup but like far worse like a panic in the disco yeah yeah <laughs> got it right got it okay fine you go to this convention and then you come back and tell us all about it all right Cool, if I remember and I don't cough over everybody and have to leave. No, I'm hoping I'll be fine now. by then. I feel like this is the end of it, so. You're like, this is the end, me too. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Today, what we are going to do is I asked AI to come up with hypothetical scenarios for us to go through because I just outsource all of my creative thinking to AI now. It's brilliant. It's a good idea. Um, that is what we're going to do today. I'm very a excited. Series and terrified. Okay. 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 Number one. Number one. What if you woke up one day and found out that you had switched bodies with your best friend? What if? What'd you do? First question: Who is my best friend? I don't. I, I don't know. You, ha you have to think that one through. Uh. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna pick someone. So, do I have to say who the best friend is? I have to. Or you okay. can if you want. My best friend works with dead bodies every day. And so... <laughs> of course they do. Go on. <laughs> Onward, no, she's not actually dead bodies. She's a she's a osteo-archaeologist. So, she deals with, like, bones and stuff. So, they're, like... They're That's archaeology cool. at this point. It's not bodies. Um okay that's so I, I was just... I, I thought like morgue you know what I mean I thought like morgue worker there is a potential for that apparently okay. okay but yeah so not you know newly dead bodies so I would go to her job and I would be very respectful of the dead <laughs> I don't know what I would do I'm trying to think of what I could do Ooh, she has family in the US I think mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go to the US that's what I'm gonna do Pretend to be her and steal all her clothes because her clothes are really good and never tell her that I took them. And that is what I'd do. What do you reckon she would do in your body? Because you swap bodies, like she's got you for a day. Cry. Be just really upset about this, <laughs> the state of affairs. Be depressed. Yeah. I mean, if you swap bodies, right, would you get the same like you'd have the would you have your brain or their brain see that's the problem in it because what if you swap bodies but it's still just you versus it changes a lot if you suddenly inherit all of their memories you know what i mean <sighs> that change that changes it a lot um oh I don't, I don't know how fucked you'd be mm, yeah that's not good no i don't want somebody you have, to, you have to like think about would you be able to trust your best friend I feel that I could. I think that she knows the worst parts of me. However, mm. I think she might chuck herself off a bridge after a day in my brain and having to relive my horrible memories. So <laughs> I think I probably would try to stop that happening if I could then genuinely, because I feel like it would be distressing and I don't know how I deal with it. So <laughs> not to be too dark. What would you do though? Let's move on from me. So... Now, obviously, the closest person to me is my boyfriend, but I would pick what? I didn't know we were allowed to pick partners, and now my girlfriend's going to be like, why didn't you pick me? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm not going to pick him either, because okay. I would want to pick my best mate, Callum, who, who you've met at my birthday and stuff, because if I was in Callum's body for a day, I would wreak havoc on his life. Why, why does... Are you okay? <laughs> Because it would be so funny to me to just like turn shit upside down. <laughs> um, uh, like the amount of damage that I could do. No, okay, I wouldn't do that exactly. <laughs> but there I are love how I'm like, oh, um, I just like wear her clothes and maybe I'll go to America or I'll try and do her job well. And you're like, I'm gonna ruin this man's whole fucking life. <laughs> Actually, no, I would make it better, right? Because my best friend, he has a problem, let's say, with um, confrontation. 
doesn't like it, hates it, path of least resistance guy every single time. I love confrontation, so it does my head in. Like, to the point that sometimes I have to say, please, can you stop telling me about, like, certain problems because you're not doing anything about it and it's really triggering me, you know? <laughs> like, there have been moments where I've just been like, let me speak to a housemate let me speak to your boss like let me just i'm going to go scorched earth on like do you know what i mean um so if i was in his body for a day all of that shit i would like knock it on its head do you know what i mean i see as somebody who hates confrontation i can imagine he would then wake up back in his body and just and be like what the fuck has she done I also, would negotiate a higher pay rise for starters. I would, I would like negotiate so many things because I would just get on with it and do it. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I suppose. So there is a good side to it. But then I'm going to throw the same thing back at you that he's also in your body. And what do you think he's going to do? Um, absolutely nothing because he's not confrontational. So he's not going to try and ruin my life or anything. I think he would. I don't think he'd do anything. I think he would just play video games all day. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I know for sure that I can trust him with, I mean, I I trust him with basically like everything, you mm-hmm. know, like, like earlier I was having to do, I was having to like jump, do some sort of bank transfer on my phone, but it was asking for like card details. So I just, what I do is like our little chat that like I, I type stuff. I type like stuff, like passwords and I say, ignore this. And then, like, I do you know, you know what I mean? Because sometimes you can't do everything on your phone. You have to, do you know what I mean? Have you heard of a notes app? But even then, even, even, I don't know. But like, he, he knows like a lot of my passwords. He knows like my bank, de- like, not but enough bank details to like log into my accounts, but he wouldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I have that trust. I have that like complete trust. I don't trust anybody. So this could not be me. This goes hand in hand with my control issues. <laughs> We're finding out a lot of shit about me today. I feel like it's too much. That's why I like doing these hypotheticals because you find out things about the other person. Like, no, I've never really trusted anyone that much, but it's like, I don't know. We've known each other for what, 12, 13 years? And, mm-hmm. but I like, mean... I wouldn't, like, I, I could trust him with money. Mm-hmm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? But yeah. like, I like, there, there are close friends of mine who, like, I would, like, no, would, I wouldn't even go. Not to say that they'd do anything, but there's, it's just not, it's not the same. But we also lived with each other for like several years and stuff. And we've seen each other at our worst. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I remember once, this always makes me laugh. I remember once, like, he had done a work day, right? He came home from work at like six o'clock and he came to the living room and he took one look at my face and went, oh no, you're on drugs. Because <laughs> I'd like been to pick up earlier that day. I'm not being quite for the audience, but it just, you know, you know, sensitive, sensitive topic. I picked up earlier that day um, and it had been for the weekend, you know, and I like, got some stuff for the weekend and I was like, hmm. I could wait two days until the weekend or I could do it now. So I was just trying to buy myself and taking pictures of myself on like the Mac webcam. And he came oh in, took God. one look at my eyes and he was just like, oh God, oh, <laughs> what, like, like, what are you doing? And I was like, hi. Um, like we see each other like at our very worst. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. I would make his life better. He would, I don't think he'd do anything with my, like he won't even spend any of my money. Do you know what I mean? But not even to get is... himself a coffee. Hmm? Oh yeah, I like. But I would let him do that. I'd be like, "Here you go, like, like take my business card. I don't care. Like, expense it, whatever. It's monopoly <laughs> money anyway." The the inheriting memories things though. Like, there are some memories again. Like he, like you know, my closest. Even you, you know, like the the worst things about me, I suppose. But you know, like there are some memories you have where it's just mortifying. It's not necessarily like it's yeah. not bad, but it's just. Yeah. But then I was with him and another one of my closest friends recently in London and we were at my hotel. We were just chatting absolute bollocks until like 3 a.m. You know, we were like 3 a.m. chats, but we're all completely sober. And we were all sharing like the mortifying things we did as like 10 year olds or whatever. So I think even then, if he inherited some memories like that, would be embarrassing. But we've kind of already shared 
<laughs> kind of, you know, just like the dumb shit that you do when you're 10. Yeah, I don't know that I have many, like, actually embarrassing stories. I can only think of one, and it's like, as an adult, I think as like a kid... I think it's just because I don't really remember my childhood very well, so I don't remember all the embarrassing shit. Maybe that's why. (laughs) So I think it'd be fine. If I can't remember it, then somebody in my body can't remember it either, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, perfect. Then we have no issues because I can't remember shit. (laughs) I'm going to share. I'm going to share. Like, this this isn't... So I'll, I'll share a bit that isn't like so embarrassing i'll just air myself out but when I'm so i got excited <laughs> when <laughs> i think this just kind of shows the mentality i had which isn't a mentality that i have now like not in the slightest right um but when like i first got the internet it was just it was just a whole new world and <laughs> It's and then you get email and I was like wow email this is magical it's like walkie talkies but like over the internet this is <laughs> like it's it's kind of like a form of magic right and so I would like attempt to email a lot of random people famous people always and it was mm-hmm. always like there is a weird kind of aspect of like social climbing behavior so like as as a child I, I would I would always <laughs> I wasn't very original so I would kind of like I'd always be like I'm going to be a writer and I'm going to write the next big thing but the next big thing was always a sequel to something someone had already done do you know what I mean mm, yeah like uh, I can't say their name but it's really funny because like like I remember being eight or nine and a classmate of mine we were writing the sequel to Lord of the Rings but we just inserted ourselves into it like he made himself a dwarf oh, I love of it, it. Do you know what I mean? And I was obvious. I was obviously like an elf, probably like you know the child of Legolas or something, right? And we were like writing this secret. It's just nonsense. <laughs> and like, what's funny is like this classmate. I can't say their name, but they're now like a like MMA boxer, bare knuckle, like hard person. <laughs> like, like really, because from my hometown, there's absolutely nothing that came from my hometown except for a big Tesco's and a bunch of like. Uh, former acquaintances of mine who all got into like MMA and boxing and like and like they do well do you know and it makes sense because it's like they were just violent as teenagers yeah. so it makes sense and like this guy who's now like a proper boxer <laughs> but we used to write little sequels to Lords of the Rings together to you know what I mean like there's a dichotomy there that's quite humorous <laughs> This is my favorite story you've ever told. I actually have tears coming out of my eyes. So bear in bear in mind that like I liked to write like I was going to write a sequel to The Matrix, right? Mm-hmm. But like, I was in it because I was the child of Neo. <laughs> the child of Neo. And like like Neo was the one and I was the two. Like <laughs> I can so see the logic though. I understand the logic. Like I do think Loki, I'm kind of like a little genius sure mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um so like and this is like this is so this is a fucking weird one to try and write the sequel to jeepers creepers what did you ever is that? you never see jeepers creepers it was like justin long's kind of breakout film do you know who he is the no. actor justin long he's like well it, it was basically his break breakout film and it was about um this this guy he's like the creeper and at first the first half of it is like really quite scary because it seems like it's just a murderer hide bodies and like trying to um stalk these two teenagers right and then the second half is more supernatural and it goes a bit bonkers and then the sequels are quite bonkers as well because as soon as you know what the monster is it does automatically become less scary you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um they had a few sequels and me and my friends like one friend in particular we would go through these just like high key obsessions over things like certain Mm -hmm. films and just like clear neurodivergent tendencies do you know what i mm-hmm. mean because it wasn't just like oh i like this it was no i'm obsessed with this like i used yeah. to listen to like the little crazy frog songs all day oh, every day so like good. how did no one test me for something <laughs> why was i like like i recently listened to the crazy frog um it's like the axel f ream like popcorn remix where i recently like watched the music video for that and i was like okay i don't understand the hold this had over me as a 10 no it's so fucking good i get it 
I don't get it. I do not get it. I would like, I would like refresh that page and like I was like, it's got like a billion views, and I think I'm half of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just yeah. holding up the whole YouTube economy at the moment and the local economy. Jesus, all the work you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like a billionaire without the millions. Um, so, so, so we were like, we're gonna write the sequel to Jeepers Creepers two. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I was looking at like the the kind of like director list, and I think it's I'm very sure like it's a relation of. Is it France? It's either Francis Francis Ford Coppola directed or produced it, or it's a relation like maybe Sophia Coppola Coppola. Like how do you pronounce it? But I think she did Lost in Translation. One of the relations of like Francis Ford Coppola, if not him, I found like the email address of him, which clearly isn't his email address. By the way, it's just one of those sites where it's like here's like people's email address. You know, like like if you type in Keanu Reeves' email address, things come up, but it's so clearly not. And I wrote out like a little kind of like like basic script and basic template, if you will. And like I emailed this, I emailed this email being like, okay, so you know, and I think I'm like eleven or twelve or whatever. Like I'm young <laughs> doing this as well. <laughs> and I just like me. I know. I just like. Dear blah blah blah, really like Jeepers Creepers. That his, do you know what? And of Jeepers Creepers too. I'm very sure one of the producers who did the film is a nonce. There's something oh, like God. there's something weird like that. And I'm there, a little twelve year old, like emailing someone to do a Jeepers Creepers too. But like we like I've I write the script. And she's, like I would do stuff like that, and it's like that's social climbing behavior. Yeah, that is mortifying. I w- I will admit that. Yeah, that's pretty. But good. I- I'm happy to admit that one because I was stupid and I was like 11 or 12 or just I, I was really young. So I'm happy to admit that one. But like the weird social climbing kind of like mm-hmm. mentality that I had, which I don't, which is weird because now I do YouTube and I don't have that at all. Like it's kind of like a weird unspoken rule that you don't use one YouTuber to get access to another. Do you know what I mean? Like you gossip and talk, but you don't like I wouldn't go to like there's like a producer for a big group that I know and I wouldn't be like to him oh can you get me in touch with blah 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 like you just don't do mm-hmm. that you know but like 12 year old me would have straight away been like hi can you get in touch with KSI do you know what I mean like but I'm happy to admit that one because I'm a grown up and I've changed but yeah I don't know I mean, what this that was had to do with the hypotheticals <laughs> I will say you've unlocked memory and I feel like I might have even spoken about this before but I feel like I remember it and then I immediately forget it again because it's just the most embarrassing fucking cringy thing. I was like really like cringe emo, like not cool emo, like horribly, horribly cringe emo. Sure. But from the time of like 11, you know, when I was 11 or 12 in primary school, we had to write these little books. We had to write our own little story about a superhero. <laughs> So I don't remember what my fucking superhero was called, but the whole point of the superhero was that she was emo. And I think that was her power, just being <laughs> emo. It was awful. She had like purple hair and she was like so cool and stuff. It's just fucking embarrassing. And that book might still be in some file somewhere. I hate it. I hope they've burnt it. It's in Irish though, so hopefully it's fine. Hopefully nobody can read it. Are you telling me that you tried to write the sequel to My Immortal? Oh my God, I think I might have. Yeah. But it's a, no, nothing can top that. And I do wonder what she's doing these days. <laughs> I hope she's well, wherever she is. I hope that she is a writer. I really do. I think that would be an amazing, like, sort of like, wow, anyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get on to the next hypothetical? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What if you had the power to travel back in time and change one event in history? Okay, so being realistic, obviously, I feel like I wouldn't because we can fuck up everything and everybody could die or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's not a fun answer. So let me pick something. I think in reality, I wouldn't do it. Um, Oh... I mean, the obvious one is Hitler, isn't it? Like, you have to stop I Hitler. know, but that's, like, that's like so generic. Like, of course, you would stop. But, no, well, actually, no, because to stop Hitler, 
because mm. you have to contextualize history that's really important right hitler didn't really spring up out of nowhere it's because of the sanctions that were placed on germany after world war one so, so to stop hitler maybe you would have had to have stopped the franz ferdinand assassin assassination that like that's why world war one happened right so maybe if you prevented that assassination like the knock-on effect like maybe world war one like because you would have to make sure that world war one didn't happen so mm -hmm. then hitler don't come to power do you know then how mean? do you make sure world war one didn't okay i'm gonna take serious world events out of it too because i feel like that's too hard I, it's just yeah so oh my god i feel like so lost because i feel like there's so much i could pick right now um mm, oh i have a good one right the catholic church <laughs> right sure our favorite church i go back to when they made christianity right and when they're starting to put the churches together and i just burn them all and we get it over with really quickly you nip it in the bud <laughs> just that like the people who want to have their religion that's fine the people who are trying to form the church mm. we get we get rid of them Mm. All all of that horribleness gone. No Spanish Inquisition, no horrible fucking Catholic pedos in Ireland or wherever else they were. I don't know if it was a worldwide problem. No church. I think it's great. Problem solved. Everybody's happy. That's better than mine. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. I wanted to say, like, get rid of My Chemical Romance so that Twilight was never made. But then... <laughs> I kind of love Twilight. <laughs> Why would you do that? Michael Grammans are my favorite band of all time. I'm, Why would you do that? I'm sorry, I won't. I do not. I'm getting rid of the church. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> what? What is yours? Um, I feel like yours was too full of lofty ideals. I'm going to keep mine more realistic. I okay. would prevent the Area 51 crash, the Roswell crash from happening. I'd prevent that, right? Because, like, you know, so I'd be in the desert just before they're about to crash. And maybe I'd, like, wave something. You know, like, flags at a runway airport. You know, when they do that, when they're, like, signalling. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just signal them. And be like, no, don't go. Like, you're going to crash. Land safely. Something's <laughs> going to happen to your ship. Just land safely. And then they land safely. And then, you know, that's what, I, that's what I'd do. That's, I feel like that's also full of ideals and trying to save <laughs> lives and stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something better than mine. Mine is too serious and boring. I'm, I need to cough again. I'm so sorry. What don't I like in the world? Besides, like, things. everybody in it. Yeah, but, like, particularly, Ooh. like, a thing. Everyone hmm. in it finds <laughs> the missing link. <laughs> Kill him. Cut their head off. Well, that's aliens. We, like, we gotta, we gotta take it further than that. The first humans. Just get rid of them. Be done. I think you know what I think. I would get rid of Mark Zuckerberg. That's what I'd do. Interesting to pick Mark because I kind of think Bezos and Musk are worse. Who? Oh, Jeff Be Bezos and Elon I heard Musk. Ba <laughs> Basil. I was like, why Basil. are you saying it like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, because then no Facebook. Which means, like, no other social medias. No boomers. No well, boomers. Well, they, they, they still exist, but they don't have an outlet for it. Just, like, no social media. I don't know. This is so hard just to pick one thing. There's so many things I want to get rid of in life. Oh, wait. No, I have the perfect one. This is my final answer, I swear. Whoever decided that cucumbers in the supermarket need to be wrapped in a little bit of plastic, kill them dead. Done. That's my answer. <laughs> okay. So your answer is the people who put plastic on uh, stuff that already has peel. So it's kind mm -hmm. of irrelevant. And mine is protecting those aliens. <laughs> yeah, well, you already <laughs> did that. Problem. So I don't need to do that. So I'll take care of the wait. vegetables. Wait, 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 wait. They crashed in Roswell because they crashed in New Mexico, which was where the atom was split for the atomic bombs. That, um, shit, what's his name? That bloke, he's just had a Oppenheimer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Oppenheimer, like, 
because that's my theory of why they crashed there because they were investigating the area because they were like why the hell like why have these idiots learned to split the atom <laughs> Like, I think they're doing a bit of space tourism or whatever, you know, like like how we have dark tourism, which is like a show on Netflix where you can go to, I don't know if you can go to Chernobyl, but like, I think you can. You Regardless, can, yeah. Yeah, same concept, right? So for me to prevent the aliens crashing, because maybe the maybe the, the leftover radio, maybe something messed with their little control pads that day, right? And maybe it's because of the nuclear test that went gone. I would have to go back and stop Oppenheimer. But then if I did that, the Germans were were like ahead when it came to, so if I if I stopped Oppenheimer, no no no, no because the nukes were after World War Two, so I would, okay I stopped Oppenheimer, final answer because it was basically after World like 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 Hitler had like, you know he was ready to, off himself, anyway mm -hmm. and then but well, we won't get into like that whole discussion because it's a deep discussion a lot of people are very like misinformed about nukes because like no there's no justification for using nukes ever there's just not a lot of people are mm -hmm. misinformed about that not gonna get into it because this is meant to be a fun like art podcast right yeah and i picked cucumbers <laughs> <laughs> i would stop up and hyper and save those aliens I will say, as you were talking about like the the radiation messing with their control panel and stuff, I'm like, she's getting into some like, you know, deep information here. We're gonna get flagged. We're gonna have people come to our doors. I don't want the men in black. Thank you. Well, it's not it's not even ruined my theory anyway. Let's quickly let's quickly move on. You might mm. like this one. What if you were the only person on earth who could see and talk to ghosts? Oh, God, I'd hate that. I'd hate it. That would be awful. I, Because I don't want it. Like, that's so much pressure. Well, first of all, it's scary. What the fuck just fell? There's one of the guys that are mad at you. <coughs> Look what you're doing to me. You're breaking me. This light does flicker occasionally, so mm -hmm. might be ghosts in here. First, it'd be scary, but you get over that, right? You get over this fear. But then it's, like, so much pressure. You have to hold the burden of all of these ghosts who want to communicate or want something done, they would never fucking leave you alone. And I'm sure they don't respect boundaries. It's not like they're going to knock on the door. They're just going to come in. Mm. You'd never sleep again. So to answer your question, I would throw myself off a bridge. Yeah, now that you've explained that, I, I think I agree because you could not... Right, so it would either drive you mad because you're, you're, like, you're able to you know speak and see ghosts. Like I think that would even drive you mad um, if you were stupid enough to publicize that fact, maybe first people would laugh at you. But then once you've like validated yourself by effectively like communicating with someone in a way that like maybe the ghost tells you secrets that, that you couldn't have known, you know, like something like that. You would never be left alone by people either because they'd be wanting to speak to like their dead nans or mums or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think I would keep it to myself, but then the ghosts would be badgering me, wouldn't they? I've had a fantastic idea. I barter with the ghosts. Like, yeah, I will help you or whatever, depending on what you can do for me. To, but how big their request is, is how big my thing is. So it might mm -hmm. be like, <clears throat> go and rob that bank for me. It might just be, could you uh, figure out what it is that that person over there is talking about? Thank you very much. Just depending. So I'll be rich. I will have like my whole little spy network. I could probably find out what all the billionaires are planning pretty fucking easily because they can spy and then i can get rid of them somehow like haunt them to death yes get the and... ghost to do the haunt in and drive them mad yes yeah and then i fix the world and then you know what if i have a little burden to bear it's fine because the billionaires are dead and i'm rich i like so okay i like your one let's both go for that okay fantastic <laughs> And that's all for today's episode. That's part one, because I've got 10 hypotheticals. I've got loads, actually. And <laughs> we only went through three. But that's what <laughs> I, I really like doing these. I think they're just fun. You have to use your imagination. It's a bit different. But that's the end of today's episode. Uh, this is in my Podmas series, where I'm optimistically trying to do 25 pods for the Christmas time, like Vlogmas, <laughs> but with pods. Very optimistic. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I know. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Make sure that you check out Evangeline on this channel. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow us on Spotify and iTunes. Give me five stars on Spotify. I don't give a shit about iTunes. Can you even like make money for it? Pff, doubt it. Spotify is where <laughs> it's at. And we'll see you guys tomorrow, optimistically, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. Bye.